Hi, I'd like to do an example with you when we start with a base, a base reaction. Um, if you haven't watched the um, acid-base playlist for how to determine pH, equilibrium constants, or even concentration using ice tables with acid reactions, please go watch that um, because the base reaction actually has one more step to it. Um, so let's start, say that we start with the base. Typically, when you have to start with the base, you'll be given a salt. Uh, now this is bleach, that's common bleach that you and I use to keep all of our socks white. Um, this is sodium hypochlorite, uh, and here's the question. I mean, it looks pretty simple, but it's going to be a fair amount of work. So let's find the pH of a 0.15, that's pretty good molarity, 0.15 molar sodium hypochlorite. Okay, this is a salt. We know every salt with sodium is going to be 100% soluble, 100% dissociate. Um, so this is going to break into, remember, an Na+, and a Cl O minus. Now, that Na plus is a neutral ion. It will not impact pH. If you have a question on this, go to that acid base equilibrium playlist and watch the video on salts, aqueous solutions of salts, and it talks about that. Um, so that, because it is associated with a strong base sodium hydroxide, is neutral, does a big fat nothing to the pH. So guess what? You ignore that. It's going to be a spectator ion. You take just this anion, it's going to be the hypochlorite. That is what is going to partially react with uh, water and impact the pH. Sodium, neutral. It won't react at all with the water oh, to change the pH. Okay, so I'm going to take this. It's going to be my hypochlorite ion, and we're going to add it to water because this is a solution, okay? The solvent's always going to be water, unless you're told otherwise, it's always water. Um, is going to be in equilibrium with, okay, this is the base, is going to accept a hydrogen. The water will be the acid, is going to donate a hydrogen. So this is going to accept that hydrogen and we will get a hypochlorous acid, HClO, aqueous plus what's left over is a hydroxide ion. Now, little reminder, this is your base, your acid, the base produces a conjugate acid, acid produces the conjugate base. Just a little reminder, if you need to go and watch conjugate acid and bases, go and watch that video if you have trouble naming, naming that. Now this would be classified as a base reaction because the base reacts with water. Super important. That means when I go to an ionization uh, constant table, I have to look up the KB and there it is. I went to a table and I looked up the KB for the uh, hypochlorite ion. The KB is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 7. So I want to say this one more time. It is a common mistake that students will make. If you have a base plus water, you find KB. You're not going to be looking up KA for the hypochlorous acid. You look up the KB. Is whatever is next to the water, that's what you look up. So we're going to look up the KB value. Okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and do our ice table. I want to find pH, which means I need to find the concentrations at equilibrium when we reach that perfect, beautiful, equal rates. Um, and to find those concentrations at equilibrium, I've got to do the ice table. Now, why am I finding the concentrations at equilibrium? Because at equilibrium, I'll know the concentration of hydroxide. And if I know the concentration of hydroxide, eventually we can find the pH. Okay. So let's do our ice table, initial change equilibrium. So initially we are given a 0.15 molar concentration of the uh, hypochlorite. Water is a liquid. I'll put that phase down here, that's a liquid. Um, so that's blank, it's liquids and salts are not a part of the equilibrium expression. We have zero hypochlorous acid, zero hydroxide ion. Now a change, notice these are all one, 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 one molar coefficients. So I use those same coefficients in the change. We're going to lose an amount of the uh, hypochlorite, and that's one mole. So I just leave it as X, understood to be one X. And for every one mole that I lose here, we will gain one mole of the hypochlorous acid and one mole of that OH. Um, so I lose an amount here, I gain an amount, gain an amount, gain that same amount. So this, we are going to subtract. A um, little reminder, this change, that's going to be the percent that ionizes. It's going to be the amount that ionizes. Um, equilibrium is super easy. I minus C, we're going to get 0.15 minus X. 
zero plus x is x, zero plus x is x. Now we can plug this into the equilibrium expression. So Kb, because this is a base reaction, is going to equal products, that's my hypochlorous acid, conjugate acid, times hydroxide, that's the conjugate base, divided by my base, which is the hypochlorite. And of course, water is not going to be a part of that. So let's go ahead and plug in everything we know. Kb is going to be 2.9 times 10 to the minus 7 equals x, right here, times x. I'm going to go ahead and multiply that. Let's just write that as x squared. Um, it's going to give me x squared divided by 0.15 minus x. Okay, we can use our little trick. Notice um, this concentration is at the tenths place. Um, this Kb is at the 10 to the minus 7. Um, I can count this x right here as negligible because there's at least one, a factor of 100 difference between the Kb value and that concentration. Um, so this, boohoo, love it, that is negligible. The reason why is x is going to be so small that when you subtract the amount that changes the x from this 0.15, it's going to be 0.1499999, whatever, and it will end up rounding to 0.15. It's as if that initial concentration doesn't change. So now we can solve. We have just a little bit of an algebra problem. I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.15. So this will be times 0.15. And when I do that, we are going to get 4.35 times 10 to the minus 8 equals x squared. How do I get rid of a square? Take the square root of both sides. And we're going to get x equals 2.0. 8, 6 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, now what's my unit on that? What unit do I have at equilibrium? All of these are molarity, always. These will be molarity. So it's going to be the molarity. Okay, so I could come back and go ahead and plug in those numbers. Notice if I subtract this from the 0.15 round, it's still just going to be 0.15. That x is negligible. So let's go ahead and put in some numbers here. Um, the equilibrium concentration for my uh, hypochlorite is still going to be 0.15 because if I subtract 2 times 10 to the minus 4 from that, it's going around to 0.15. Um, here we're going to have the 2.0. I'll go ahead and put it to 366 times 10 to the minus 4, 2.09 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, great. So we found the concentrations at equilibrium. Um, now we need to find the pH, the pH. Oh, I do want to pause. Every once in a while, you'll have a teacher ask you for the concentration as an Na+. Remember, that didn't react as a spectator ion. So it's still just going to be a 0.15. It doesn't do anything. It just floats on the, on the solution, does big fat nothing. So it's still a 0.15. If a teacher asks you for the neutral ion, what is concentration as an equilibrium? Didn't do anything. Same as what it started as. Um, okay, pH. So what do I have? Well, I know the OH minus. So we can do negative log of OH and get POH. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll do another color. Let's actually, we'll do purple so that you can see the difference here. Okay, so POH, just a little reminder, equals the negative log of the concentration of OH. Remember, uh, if you haven't learned about logs, it's just a button on your calculator for right now until you learn about the base 10. Um, let's go ahead and plug in. POH is going to equal negative log times, all right, here's my concentration. That is 2.09 times 10 to the minus 4. And when you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 3.68. Okay, can't tell you how many times on a test I've given students this base and they have to find pH and they circle that number. I mean, they do all of this beautiful work with the ice table, circle that number. But remember, when you take the negative log of OH, you found POH, POH. There's one last easy, tiny little step. We've got to bring that to pH. How do you do that? pH plus POH equals 14. So if I plug in that 3.68, subtract that from 14, the pH is going to be our 10.32.
10.32, and that would be the pH. And it should be a base. It should be a base because we had a base react with water to produce that hydroxide. So we're gonna have a greater concentration of hydroxide than we do hydrogen. So it should be above a pH of seven. This, the 3.68 would not be a reasonable answer. If we add um, bleach to water, it's not going to make an acidic solution. It will make a basic solution. So that would not be reasonable. So remember, when you get an answer, think about it. Is this reasonable? If I were to predict the pH, is that what I predict? No. Um, and that can be one of your judges of, wait, did I do this right? <sighs> one more step, subtract it from 14. Okay, so very similar to doing an acid reaction where you're given an acid um, solution, what is the final pH? Here are the couple of things that you need to be careful if you're given a base. Okay, number one, often it's given as a salt. So you're going to have a, a neutral spectator ion. Don't include that in the reaction. It will not impact pH. Second, okay, most common mistake that I've seen. Second, be so careful. Look up the KB value. It's the base reacting with water. Don't look up the conjugate acid. Don't look up the Ka. You're going to do a lot more Ka problems than you will KB. If it's a base plus water, look up the KB. Last thing, you're going to get the concentration for hydroxide. So when you do that negative log, remember it's pOH. You've got to go one more step. Um, pH plus pOH equals 14. Change that from pOH to pH, and you're good to go. All right, good work. You should be impressed with yourself. Feel good, a little bit of um, satisfaction um, that you're doing this. It's impressive. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.